All right, so in the previous video, we had set up our service worker to display notifications on the client. Now let's focus on sending messages from a server to the service worker, which can then be displayed as a notification on the web page. Before getting there, keep in mind that the service worker runs on a separate thread from the main thread. We want the service worker that's running in the background to get the notifications. So if at all the user is on a different page and some event takes place in the backend, a message can be sent to the service worker, which can then take care of displaying it as a notification in your browser. If that is the case, then it makes more sense to call the show notification method that we have over here inside the service worker file and not in the main script. So before actually getting into the push notification section, let me take you through the flow one more time. Now the first step was to ask the user for permission to send notifications. We are already done with that. Now if the user allows our app to send them notifications, we need to send this user's information to the server. We'll store the user's info in some database so that the next time there's an event that's notification worthy, this user will get the notification. To send the push message to the client, we need to add logic on the server side. That will be the third step. And finally, we'll use the information present inside the push message from the server and display it as a notification to the client. So that's the basic flow. And we are done with asking the notification permission. So let's move forward. Now, before actually adding logic to this application, I do want to make some changes to the app. I'll get rid of the dummy notification that we make inside this main function because as I mentioned, we'll put it inside the service worker file when there's a push delivered from the server. So let me just get rid of this line. Let's also get rid of the registration instance and let me add the request permission function inside this right before we register the service worker. So I'll get rid of this registration instance. And I'll call the request notification permission method. Also, let me bring back the button that we were using to ask for notification permission. I genuinely don't know why I got rid of the button to be very honest. You're stupid. So let me just add it over here. We'll call the main function on the on click event and inside the script. I'll get rid of the main call over here. So now if the notification permission is not granted, this error will be thrown and in turn, it will stop the execution beyond this line, which means the registration will also not work. Only when the notification permission is granted, will the service worker be registered. Okay. Now we'll be focusing primarily on the service worker file because that's where most of the logic will reside. At least most of the client side logic. So the service worker itself goes through a life cycle and we can hook into any one of these events and run our own functions as callbacks. We'll be using the activate event. So essentially when the service worker is registered and activated, we'll try to subscribe this user to a push service. So for push messaging to work, there has to be a channel between the server and the client in order for the server to send push messages. You can think of it as a newsletter. Only when you subscribe to a newsletter, do you get it over your email. Similarly, the user also has to be subscribed in order to receive push messages. We'll do that using the subscribe method that's present on the push manager. And this push manager is present on the service worker registration. So I'll just create an event listener inside this service worker file. And this event listener will be for the activate event. The callback function will basically have the registration instance, the service worker registration. And I'll use this registration. Access the push manager on this registration and I'll call the subscribe method. The subscribe method takes in an options object. For now, we'll just keep it empty. And since this is an asynchronous call, we'll have to await it. And for that, we'll have to make the callback function a sync. I'll save the subscription inside a variable to see what it looks like. So yeah, once this is done, I'll simply console log the subscription. Now, if I save this and go back to the browser, I'm getting this error because 
this is not supposed to be service worker registration it's just supposed to be registration i'll go back to the browser let me see if i already have a service worker i'll need to get rid of this now once i reload this and click on the button you see this error message here the error says that we are missing an application server key now if i open the same url inside firefox i'm inside the firefox browser i'll try to click on the enable notification button let me get rid of this and do it again i'll allow this inside the application section you can see the service worker running and if i click on this link and inspect the service worker you'll see that we actually get the push subscription so it actually did work we did not get an error message but in case of chrome it did not work i'll just zoom in so that you can see how this push subscription looks like now what exactly went wrong here what's the problem with chrome and why is it asking for a separate key the thing is chrome expects two technically optional parameters so in the case of firefox you clearly saw that the parameters were optional but in the case of chrome it expects a set of two parameters first one is an application server key as the error message says right here and the second one is user visible only now to understand this we need to take a step back and see why there's a need for a key in the first place so we are trying to send a notification from a backend server to the client but the communication does not happen that way as in the server does not directly talk to the client there's a middleman called a push service when i click on the enable notification button the service worker gets activated and we call the subscribe method this method is subscribing the user to the push service the url that you see here this endpoint this endpoint is basically the endpoint to the push service now in the case of chrome we are supposed to pass in a key this key is actually part of a public private key pair so we pass the public key inside the subscribe method and the browser creates a specific domain for the push service with information present in the public key so the way firefox handles this without having an application server key is by creating a unique key by itself behind the scenes so in the case of chrome if it wants to create a push service it needs an application server key now once this push service domain is created which basically means that the browser has linked the client to the push service when the server wants to send a push message to this client we are again going to talk to this push service in the form of an api call so basically this push service is going to be in between the client and the server the api call that is made from the backend to this service will have an authorization header inside which we will pass in the private key so the key pair that we generated earlier the private key is going to reside inside the server the public key is being passed inside the subscribe method using the public key we generate the push service url when the server wants to send a push message to the client it will speak to the push service not the client directly the way it's going to authenticate itself is by using the private key inside an authorization header once this api request gets to the push service it will match the signature from the public key residing inside the service endpoint and the private key present inside the api request if both of these match that means a message is coming from an appropriate server and not some random remote third party server so it's basically a security measure that prevents anyone else from sending messages to this user now the reason we do not have to provide any key in the case of firefox is because they handle authentication differently by creating random unique ids for each user I've attached a link to the doc in which they explain everything very clearly. One more thing that you might have guessed is that if I have a different push service for different browsers, as in when I click the button from Chrome versus when I click from Firefox, it's going to use a different service. This means that the API call signature should also be different for these services. To put it simply, when I send a push message from the backend to a Firefox push service, I need to create a different API call structure and similarly it has to be different for a Chrome push service. Thankfully that's not the case. We'll use the same API structure for all push services because there's a standard that has been followed. So at least that's not something that we need to be worried about.
Now this was all for the application server key option. The second option for the subscribe method argument was user visible only. This always has to be true. It's basically an agreement with the push service that the message that's coming from the server to the push service and then to the browser will always be displayed in the client. There won't be any silent push messages it will always be displayed to the user no matter what. The reason why there's a separate property for this and it's not set to true by default is because the engineers working on this spec still don't know whether silent push messages should be allowed or not. So they decided to have a separate property temporarily. All right, so one last time, let's look at the complete flow from start to end. I click on the enable notification button and click on allow. It will register a service worker and when the worker is activated, it will run the subscribe method. Depending upon the browser in which we click the button, the subscribe method will either take in an application server key or it won't. This key is part of a public private key pair. The private key is going to reside on the server. The public key is going to be passed inside the subscribe method. Based on this public server key, it will create a subscription with the push service. The push service endpoint will have info related to this public server key. We will send this push subscription to the backend and save it in a database. We'll create a separate API to store the subscription on the backend. So don't worry about that. This will complete the connection between the client and the push service. Now, when we want to send a message from the backend to the client, we'll send an API call to the push service. We get the push service endpoint from the subscription that we have stored in our database. We use the private key inside the API call, which is validated by the push service. It matches the public key present in the push service endpoint and the private key from the API call header. Once matched, it sends the push message to the browser. It actually does not directly send the push message to the browser. It puts the message in a queue and only when the browser is online, it will send the message. So let's just assume for now that it's online and we'll get the message instantly. The service worker in the browser has a push event listener that will get triggered whenever there's a push message from the push service. And we can then display whatever message is present in the push message inside a notification. So that is essentially the entire flow that we'll follow to send push messages to the client. All right, so I hope this made sense to you. In the next video, we'll put everything together and be done with it once and for all. This can get a bit complicated. It actually took me a while to wrap my head around it. So try to watch it a couple of times to get it drilled in your head. After a point, it'll just click. If you do have any doubts though, Put them in the comments, either me or someone much smarter than me will answer your question. So yeah, do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.